there's a love-hate thing going on with Paul and Rabbit. He shot a lot when he was a youngster, and he simply bunnied out. When you're gutting 100 of them in a night, you're earning money and it puts you off rabbits. Especially when you've got a big tapeworm in it, or... <laughs> just saying the facts. That's when you wear blue gloves, trust me. But these to be clean as a whistle. But look at that fur, absolutely belted. PRSD, Post Rabbit Shooting Disorder. With the game season over, Paul has to turn his attention to this type of pest control, although it sometimes feels that every heat signature wants a slice of the estate's crops. Obviously everyone knows now rabbits is not the rabbits they used to be, and um, when I was a boy again, we sh I used to shoot 100 rabbits a week, um, one night a week, the rabbit shoots, to shoot 100, then by half of the season, say the season, I start shooting into like October, um, late September, October, all the way through till about April. Um, I shoot 100 a week and that was my pocket money. Headshot, two two headshot rabbits with a pound each. Skinned, 120, but I didn't do skin and have time for that. But like I say, there's not so many around, as many around now, but there's pockets on here where the sand, where the sand, the rabbits. And then we're going to go to the far end and there's a bit of stubble. So what we'd try and do, we'd do it off the bike, but then we might do a bit of walking as well, but we'll have to see how we get on. That's a plan of action, rabbit pie. Are you enthusiastic? You're looking as if you're a little jaded. End no, no. of season. No, 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 well, I'm, I'm ready. No, it's been, a, it's been, um, I, yesterday, Sunday, even getting feeders in. So yeah, it's been a, but Barbados is calling. <laughs> Are we going? Uh, no, you're not. This evening we are thermal rabbiting. As we will hear later, Paul has used all methods of rabbit control. Let's see how effective he is with his new Hick Micro dedicated panther scope on top of this ticker 2-2. Riding side saddle is David, who will be using the Griffin Spotter. Though when bouncing along on a quad, a lamp is a useful high-speed scanner. Paul knows the hot spots and starts picking off the rabbits. They're looking clean and healthy. He gets a left and a right. They're youngsters. How will they be? Six, eight weeks? I don't know, I'm guessing here. Yeah. Six. Well, they're not young anyway. And we're, where are we now? Uh, February? So being Christmas born, so obviously you get it all year round with rabbits, but it's been such a mild year, it's just unusual to see such big rabbits, young rabbits, now you sort of get them breeding this time of year rather than sort of like uh, through the winter months. So mild winter, more rabbits. So maybe the rabbits are coming on a comeback. Maybe. Healthy rabbits again though, nice healthy rabbits. Well, do you know what? I used to shoot these for my uh, gran and she called them frying pan size. <laughs> so yeah. So I used to skin them off and shoot them and, for, and uh, skin them off and then she, yep, she had them frying pan sized rabbits. Perfect. <laughs> These are the only frying pan sizes we see. The rest are all roasting dish size. Paul tries walking and stalking. He gets a couple but decides the bike is the more efficient method. The thermal scope is doing the job and it's accurate. There's no point adopting new technology if you can't be confident that you will make consistent headshots. So, I mean, if anyone, any doubts about the sort of accuracy of this, of these types of units, head shooting rabbits is a pretty good way of showing it, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, I thought I'd shot so far, a dozen, I suppose, and a um, little bit off on one or two of them, but yeah, headshot, clean rabbit, dead rabbit. So, humane and accurate. So. Yeah, very pleased actually. Um, but the same as anything, you know, it's about getting out there and getting used to the bit of kit. You know, I was a bit rusty to start with, I'm not going to lie. But after a few shots, <laughs> I come back. Um, but it's just, you know, just using the kit and obviously a little bit fiddlier than normal trying to record it and to get some good rabbits on, on uh, cameras, quite difficult, same as anything we do, but, and to get some good content for you guys. But we're actually doing a practical job as well because I was looking down on this wheat field you can see that, look. you can see David, look, on there, look, look at that, look, it's, it is getting, this, um, this stuff here, <laughs> look, basically, that should be like that, long, but it's getting hit, see all these little bits nibbled, all the ends taken off, and that should be like, you look down it, it looks flat, it should be, you know, we've had some good weather, it should be tillering up and getting some, some good growth up, but, you know, like, it should be like this here, 
Instead, it's actually flat. There's not, you know, it's not getting away. So grabs are keeping it down. And uh, these are the ones that are coming in. You see the, so the soil, really sandy soil, um, dry soil, bottom of these hedgerows. Holes all the way down through, look. They come from the village. Another one just come out, so you might have to keep going. Is that right with you, David? No. <laughs> What's the next plan, Dave? Want some more? See that one there, look. We need to take that one out. It's got a big fat belly of uh, corn. Back to the larder, and as always, regardless of quarry, Paul wants it presented well. That's very neat. Back to the old presentation thing, isn't it? You know, any game looks good when it's hung up and... What are you doing with the, with the last cut? You sort of, almost as a Kelly's heel. Yeah, that's it, yeah. So you cut through, goes through, basically locks it on. Through there, and basically cuts through so then it won't pull out. Mm. <laughs> What's the most efficient way of rabbit shooting, in your opinion? Um... A vehicle makes it always so much easier to get around the place, especially now. I mean, when I first come to this estate, um, there's rabbits everywhere. So you just literally drive out the farm yard and you start shooting. Quad bike's a kitty. Quad bike, two two to start with, then one seven, range difference. Then they're just scared of bikes and the cracking. Quad bike, shotgun. Um, yeah. Quad bike and shotgun? Yeah. I've never done that. Haven't you? That's, uh, that's the best ever. I don't know, it's weird, it's something nostalgic about seeing rabbits hanging up. Yeah. This looks good, doesn't it? Everybody's got their certain way of doing rabbits. You know, I've been ferreting when I was younger, back to the younger days again, and you go with one guy and he's like this way, and he's, uh, some do it this, some split it on the back and rip them both apart. My dad taught me this way and I like it, so that's why I do it. It's a good way of keeping the meat clean and I keep the same principle on doing the deer as well. So when you're skinning it away, you're skinning everything away from the meat all the time. Got a dirty hand, quick wash, put it away. So all the fur comes away from the meat all the time. Around the back, she's peeling it off around the back. Around there, get to the tail, little nick on the tail. So you've got a very, very clean, clean carcass. Again, presentation is key and our rabbit looks clean, fresh and ready for a frying pan, if you have one large enough. For more information about the Hick Micro range, go to eliteoptical.co.uk.